What's up everybody man back welcome to another Godzilla Explained and today we're going to be jumping on into the very confusing topic of the time dilation in the MonsterVerse as presented in Monarch Legacy of Monsters Season 1. Spoiler warning for Monarch Legacy of Monsters Season 1. If you haven't seen Season 1 of Monarch Legacy of Monsters, we're going to be doing all the spoilers for it. So either go watch the show or just stick around and you're going to get spoiled. We're talking all episodes, all 10. Monarch Legacy of Monsters introduces us to a very high concept side of science fiction into the MonsterVerse. In fact, it's playing upon real world science, but it's real world science that hasn't been proven in the real world. And it's going to be a very complex and tricky discussion. And so I want to shout out a couple videos that you can go check out that will have supplementary material that will help support this discussion and are just made by people a lot smarter than myself. Arvin Ash and Cruise Cats both made videos discussing the concept of wormholes, which is going to be very important to this discussion. You can go check all of those out linked down below, but those videos are going to be the basis of our wormhole discussion, and then Beyond Ideas made a very good video discussing the time dilation as presented in the film Interstellar. Monarch Legacy of Monsters is building upon almost all of the same ideas as the film Interstellar, with the way that time dilation works, in that it's not like time travel. It's it's not like Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah from 1991 where you have the Futurians coming back in time. Instead, it is that you are perceiving time different than someone else relative to you at a different point in space-time, and so it seems like you're time traveling, but you're not, which is why we don't call it time travel, we call it time dilation. Basically, the difference is one of them you're jumping into the future, and the other one you're still living through all of that time, you're just perceiving it differently than the people in it. So Monarch Legacy of Monsters plays around with this stuff a lot, and it actually introduces us to a brand new side of the MonsterVerse and it tells us that there are hollow earth portals all over the planet. The first portal ever discovered seems to be discovered in Kansas, and it is closed after Operation Hourglass, or at least I think it's closed. It closes due to the whirlwind vortex that opens up on the surface, which was caused by the intense energy of the hourglass capsule actually entering into the tunnel. We learned that there's about six more portals that's kind of iffy, depending on what map you're looking at in the show, but there's one in Alaska, Kazakhstan, San Francisco, Africa, Central Asia, Vietnam, slash Cambodia, Cambodia. And these portals are actually the point of interest on Hiroshi's map as well. They're revealed in episode 6. Some of the portals actually turn out to be titans and some are still portals. Shaw exited a different portal in Japan in the 1980s that's thought to be a portal to the spirit realm, but that's never mentioned again in the show and it may have closed after he exited. The mark in San Francisco could very well be a portal caused by Godzilla heading back to the Hollow Earth after the events of Godzilla 2014, or it could just be a point of interest due to that being the central point of the G-Day battle. We're also told by Tim that Godzilla potentially returned to a portal that he opened up in the South Pacific, which is where he came from in the first place. The portal in Africa turned out to be a sleeping Godzilla that Hiroshi awakened in hopes that he'd create a new portal, and that plan didn't really work as Hiroshi wanted. He says that something went wrong, indicating that Godzilla did not create a new portal for him, but rather returned to sea. Finally, we learned that there was a portal opened up in the South Pacific just before G-Day, just a couple days before Godzilla emerged, and this is actually where Godzilla emerges from the Hollow Earth as he begins to hunt for the moon leading into the Hawaii battle. During the events of the show, Shaw actually closes the portal in Alaska and Kazakhstan, and so while those portals are closed, the other ones begin to flare up and become even more powerful. Basically, it seems like the way that's working is there's a whole bunch of leaks in this wall, and Shaw is plugging them up, and by plugging one leak, it is putting more pressure on the other, and they're about to erupt. Who knows what happens when they do. Finally, Godzilla vs. Kong tells us that there are a few more portals that are undiscovered as of the time Monarch Legacy of Monsters takes place. There's one in Antarctica near King Ghidorah, and then there is one faulty portal on Skull Island. In Monarch Legacy of Monsters, we learned that there is an original source of gamma radiation coming from one of these portals, and that it's actually a signal containing a hidden message that turns out to be from Keiko Randa, who's trying to alert the surface to her presence in Axis Mundi. The ending of the episode Beyond Logic reveals that that portal was located on Skull Island, but it's not the same portal that Nathan Lind and his team attempt to enter from. Not according to the expanded universe, which tells us that that portal is deep within a cave in a mountain range.
range. Godzilla also opens up a new portal in Hong Kong during the events of GBK, but that has yet to happen. Entry to the Hollow Earth gets really complicated in this show. General Puckett explains that the vortex that forms within the Hollow Earth holes is actually a wormhole that fast travels the entity passing through it to its destination. This actually lines up with the rift seen in Godzilla vs. Kong that launches the heaves to the Hollow Earth within seconds, and as General Puckett explains, the portals are unstable and require a titan to pass through beforehand so that they won't collapse due to human entry. For unknown reasons, Operation Hourglass goes horribly wrong and the portal seems to collapse anyways. Maybe that's because they didn't let the titan pass fully through the portal before dropping the pot into it, or maybe it's because that theory isn't correct, as Godzilla vs. Kong would imply by allowing the heaves to travel through without closing the portals. But the idea that the portals sometimes collapse and then they sometimes don't is actually not as far-fetched as it seems. According to the theory of relativity, the second something passes through a wormhole, it would collapse because the gravitational effects would basically pull the ends together. Meanwhile, in quantum mechanics, we're told that negative energy can be introduced to a system by manipulating the electrical field to reverse the spin of the portal and therefore it would stay open. It is possible, though the show doesn't really dive into it, that that's what titans do, which is why Puckett theorizes that they stabilize the portals. The idea of a wormhole is connected to the idea of the Einstein-Rosen bridge, and it comes from the iconic ER paper, in which the two scientists explain that there must be a singularity at the center of a black hole. This is because that would be a point of infinite mass. In order to create a singularity like this, this happens when something super heavy, in this instance a massive warping of gravity, is added to space-time. The scientists theorize that if two super heavy gravitational fluxes existed, they could be joined together at the singularity, creating a bridge between the two of them. This is a point in which space-time warps and connects. It's not much of a stretch to say that the rift in the middle of the hollow earth tunnels is a wormhole, considering how they behave. It's also supported by the fact that in order to detect them, Monarch had to intercept readings that could only be produced by black holes, and yet they were coming from the Earth itself. As for the time dilation, how does that work? Keiko is pulled through a portal in 1959, and lands in what the gang believes to be 2015. For Keiko, 57 days have passed, but for the outside world, at least 56 years have passed. For Keiko, nearly every day she believes she spent in Axis Mundi correlates to one passing year on the surface. If you think you understand what's going on where one day in Axis Mundi correlates to one year, that completely gets thrown out the window. Leland Shaw falls through a portal during Operation Hourglass in 1962. He is is then attacked by the Ion Dragon and his team is killed. Roughly seven days later, or so he estimates, Shaw is pulled back out of the portal by the Ion Dragon and winds up displaced by 20 years, landing in 1982. For Shaw, nearly every day spent in Axis Mundi correlates to 2.8 years on the surface. That is not the same at all as what we were previously just told. Finally, Kate, Shaw, and May fall into a portal in 2015. They seem to spend about two Hollow Earth days in the portal, as we can see they make it through nearly two full daytime cycles before returning home. It's unknown how long those daytime cycles last, are they 24 hours like they are on the surface? I don't know, it doesn't really seem like it, it seems much less than that. But when they eventually do wind up home, they discover that two full years have passed, and it seems to be late 2017. So for the gang, nearly every day spent in Axis Mundi correlates to a little under one year passed on the surface. But again, it's not like they spend 20 24 hours down there. It's Axis Monday days, which seem to be considerably shorter. Why is this happening to them, and why does the time not line up from person to person? Deep within gravitational wells, time itself is warped. Axis Monday clearly does not have that intensive gravity. The characters first of all survive their landing in it, and then they're also not weighed down by heavy gravity everywhere they go. It's not like the gravity is more intense and makes it harder to move, or crushes Godzilla under his own weight. It's simply the same as Earth. What we know is that light loses energy as it exits zones of intense gravity, and the only way this type of gravitational redshift can happen is if the points of intense gravity experience time faster than the outside world. The theory of relativity explains that the greater the acceleration of an object, the slower it will move through time. I don't think that's what's happening in Axis Mundi itself. So what causes the time dilation in Monarch specifically? The effects of gravity appear to be the same in Axis Mundi as they are on the Earth, and therefore it's reasonable to assume that Axis Mundi isn't the source itself of the 
intense gravity. If Axis Mundi is located within the Hollow Earth tunnel system, then I guess it's possible that this location is constantly undergoing intense gravitational pressure resulting in the time dilation. However, you don't see those effects on Axis Mundi itself. It's not like in the movie Interstellar when they go to the planet near the black hole and they suffer the extreme gravitational weight of the planet as a result. This is totally different. I theorize that this isn't the case at all. I think that the portals act as a gateway to Axis Mundi. Clearly, the time spent in that realm doesn't really affect how much time passes on the surface world, and the perfect example of that is Godzilla. Godzilla enters Axis Mundi and does battle with the Ion Dragon and then leaves. He actually leaves after the characters. There is no indication at all that Godzilla has been absent for any noteworthy period of time. Godzilla has been on the surface long enough for Monarch to have advanced data on his movements, behaviors, and patrols of the planet by the year 2019. This wouldn't really work if Godzilla just vanished from the timeline anytime he entered Hollow Earth or Axis Mundi. Shaw's week-long trip to Axis Mundi also doesn't correlate to the other group's time dilation. There's no easy number to say one hour equals seven years on the surface world. It's just not that simple. It's not even as simple as saying one day equals one year. I don't think it's about how much time you're in Axis Mundi at all. I think it's about how you get there. The Hollow Earth itself has strange gravitational effects. Nathan Lind explains that there are areas more dense than the Earth, and we see that. As we see Kong find the central gravitational reversal point, where the Hollow Earth gravity is actually less dense than it is on Earth. Nathan Lin's brother was killed in a mission to Hollow Earth because he hit an intense gravitational inversion that had higher points of gravity. See, time dilation has nothing to do with the Hollow Earth. Kong doesn't hang out in the Hollow Earth and then come to the surface to find that a ton of time has passed. Kong doesn't even jump through the portal and exit in order to find that Hong Kong has already been destroyed, Mechagodzilla's already killed Godzilla, and 10 years have passed since they entered. Kong exits just barely moments after he enters, with Godzilla only having just walked away from the portal he's freshly created. And Godzilla didn't spend years creating that portal either. I think it's all about the entry method, how you get into Hollow Earth. That's the key here. The Hourglass crew enters with the capsule, built with the needed aerodynamics to follow a Titan slipstream into the Hollow Earth. We see them fire past one branch of the portal and then follow the Ion Dragon down a different stream, shooting them out into Axis Mundi. We know that Titans don't experience time dilation, as I've already stated. It's very plausible that due to the crew following the wake of the Ion Dragon so directly while they're in the pod meant to flow through these portals, they land in the year 1962 just as they left. When Shaw exits Axis Mundi, this happens when he is sucked through a vortex. His body is sucked through, and it's not meant to make that trip. It can't navigate its way through the wormholes as easily. These wormholes would be the source of intense gravitational pressure, and are most likely where the time dilation itself occurs. Keiko is pulled into the portal by a bunch of baby endoswarmers, far from the traditional size of a titan and lacking its mass. They break up as they fall into the portal together, meaning that their mass is actually even less than it was before. It's not really enough to create this sustainable travel into the Hollow Earth, and therefore Keiko was likely falling for what actually turned out to be nearly 60 years, landing long after Shaw had already left Axis Mundi. They were never in Axis Mundi at the same time, which is why she had no clue his team entered in the first place. Keiko didn't land in Axis Mundi 60 years ago, and for her it only felt like 57 days. No, she landed there 57 days ago. The gang at the end of the show most likely lands in Axis Mundi, having already experienced the two-year time gap as a result of them falling in with just their human forms. That's why when Godzilla shows up at the end of the episode, he appears bulkier than he did in episode 6, because he's already had the two years to pack on the weight needed to get to his 2019 status. Their exit from Axis Mundi uses the Hourglass pod, and likely travels the portal with similar ease, resulting in them exiting Axis Mundi just shortly after they entered the portal. Otherwise, Apex would have no way of knowing when they needed to activate their magnets in order to help pull them out. They'd just be receiving the signal that someone's exiting that portal for two full years. And sure, it could be growing stronger over time, giving them an estimation of when that pod will exit, or it could simply be that Keiko's signal was coming from that portal, and they received data that the portal had been opened, allowing them to intercept the traveling passengers with ease. As for the Hollow Earth, we don't see the same effects, simply because the Heaves know how to navigate the portals with ease. There's no noticeable time dilation for those characters because they fly through the portal. They don't get sucked around and flung through it. They don't wind up missing their turn the way that we see them do in Monarch Legacy of Monsters, and that's why Kong can live in the Hollow Earth and the characters can live in the Hollow Earth and no time passes on the surface world. As we understand it in Godzilla vs. Kong, it's linear. Kong finds the axe, he plugs it into the axe base and illuminates the Hollow Earth with all the juicy energy. At the same exact time on the surface world, we see in Hong Kong they receive the signal that the Hollow Earth energy source has been tapped, and Godzilla also responds immediately accordingly. There's not a major difference in time going on. Meanwhile, I think in Monarch Legacy of Monsters, 
in the final episode, Keiko actually landed far after she thought she did. I don't think she even landed in the year 2015. I think she landed in the year 2017, along with the rest of our characters. She just simply landed 57 days before they did. The time dilation in Monarch Legacy of Monsters is one of the biggest unanswered questions coming out of the show, but those are my theories on how it works. I don't think it has anything to do with how long you spend in Access Monday. I think that's what the characters are afraid of because they don't fully understand the way it works. The fact that we don't see any intense gravitational effects in Access Monday, and the fact that the characters have such inconsistent times spent in Access Monday versus time passage on the surface world makes me believe that it's all about how you get in and not really about how much time you're there. Godzilla and the Titans can simply swim their way through those portals and navigate through them because that's what they're designed to do. Godzilla can clearly defy those gravitational effects and pick which portal he's going to enter through, which is why Godzilla doesn't vanish from the timeline anytime he enters a Hollow Earth portal. In fact, in the movie Godzilla King of the Monsters, after Godzilla's done with Antarctica and he's headed for Ghidorah and Rodan, he disappears back into a Hollow Earth tunnel. Godzilla doesn't appear decades later. He appears just a few hours later because linear time has passed for Godzilla as it has for the surface world. And that's because the Titans can navigate those gravitational portals. Or at least, that's my theory. My film theory. What do you guys think is going on with the time dilation in Monarch Legacy of Monsters? How do you think it affects the broader Monsterverse? Why don't you think it affects the characters in the films like Godzilla vs. Kong and Godzilla x Kong the New Empire? And why do you think it affects the characters in Monarch Legacy of Monsters differently depending on which character we're talking about? Lee Shaw is the real weird one. He only spent seven days by his estimate in the Hollow Earth and then he was sucked back out 20 years later. Why did that happen? Lee Shaw would have spent about 20 days in the Hollow Earth if the day to year thing was the actual conversion rate. I just think unfortunately for Shaw when he was being sucked around that portal 20 full years passed before he was spit out. And same with Keiko. Once she fell in, she wound up missing about 60 years before she landed. All right, comment below and let me know what do you guys think about all this stuff? Where do you think I am? Do you think I'm totally off base? I'm very curious to hear what everybody else's theories on this are, but that's the best I got for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons over on Patreon. I really appreciate the support I get on the Patreon, and it is through the support of the Patreon that I am able to continue making videos like this for you guys. I'm going to keep these Monarch deep dives going as long as I can, so if you have any burning questions left after Season 1, comment those down below, and I'll do my best to explain them. I'm going to jump into what is Axis Monday in the first place in a separate video, but if you have any other burning questions, questions that you're left wondering what the answers are to, comment those down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys next time for the next one. D-Man out.